So um, we have a number of guests tonight, and I'm just going by what I see on my screen here. We've got Steve Jeffrey, Todd Coleman, Sky Barish, uh, Chelsea Walsh. Who else have we got here? Mary Nealon's on the line. Okay. Uh, have we got anyone else that I've missed in terms of a guest? Uh, George here. Oh, hi, George. I did see you. I'm sorry. And we have uh, Paul Jan and Rupert Turan. I'm sorry? Jan and Rupert Turan. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Um, and do we have any corrections or amendments to the agenda? Sarah? Sarah, Sarah, Sarah? Peter, I just want to include, um, I want to just talk about very briefly at the end, uh, plans for uh, modifying the town clerk's office to handle COVID. Okay, well, we can do that. We can do that at the end, right? You're right, fine with absolutely. That? Okay. So, I um, uh, Peter, yes, yeah, uh, something on budget towards the end under new business. Okay, so the budget committee might be able to help. Okay, that's great, George. If you just if you just remind me if somehow I forget by the time we get down there, I'll do that. I, I'll do my best not to forget you. Oh, it's absent for all. I wrote it down, Peter. I'm sorry, I wrote it down. Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay, so uh, number one on the agenda, and we're right on time, is revising the parking situation at the top of Notch Road at the entrance to the town forest. Uh, Paul Simonera to attend. He's here. Action possible. So, uh, Steve, is that you first to introduce this, or Paul? Well, Paul's been working on that, so I'll let Paul take over on that. Okay. Okay, Paul. Good evening, everybody. So I've, I've asked Brian, um, Brian Redmond to join in on us tonight. We've, we've been working a lot with, with Brian uh -oh. in the state of Vermont. Paul, we can't understand you. See what what if any compromise we can i still have you peter oh oh we can't understand can you, you at me? all yeah that's better can you hear me much so better now. Thousand better can you hear me you got mary your camera peter? Too, Paul. yeah turn your camera on take it off yeah take your camera believe. off that'll help with the bandwidth Oh, okay. How about now? We can hear you fine now. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. We need to start um, again. We missed, yeah, we missed no, what we said before. No problem. Sorry. Okay. So, so just to, to brief everybody in, we've we've had some concerns over the amount of of traffic, which certainly has been exacerbated by by the COVID nineteen pandemic uh, with with a, a pretty sizable increase in traffic up on uh, most of uh, both of the uh, trailheads that, that are in Middlesex, at least this one oh, first thanks. being up on Notch Road, leading on to um, the town forest. Uh, I, I've invited Brian Redmond to come to the board meeting tonight because he's he's been one of the big advocates for, for trying to see something different happen up there. Um, we've met with, with the state representative for the wildlife management area up there uh, to, to see what the state had to offer us in regards to the parking situation going on up there. So this is a, a very complex project because number one, the, the town has really no no means in in regards to property that they own until very far down the class four road so this is going to be a, a big part of trying to improve the roadway safety up there beyond where the current turnaround is um number one number two finding uh, if there's any possible ways of, of making a better parking situation, a, a, a bigger parking lot, moving the parking lot, um, 
that that way there and, and also accommodate the, the town turnaround. Um, so I'm, I'm going to let Brian go ahead and speak in, in regards to, to what some of his larger concerns are about. And I think that Brian has, Sarah, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the board has seen some of the concerns that Brian has had uh, up there with the increase in traffic, not just this year, but, but over the last three, four, five years with the amount of traffic that's increased with, with the town forest being up there. So I'll, I'll let Brian talk on his behalf. Where is Brian? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I guess I'd start by saying that, uh, in, you know, generally speaking, broadly speaking, we're really supportive of the town's conservation efforts and the creation of the town forest and the development of the town forest uh, hiking trail. It's an incredible resource for, for the community and uh, offers valuable public access. Um, to, to the wildlife and nature. And I think that's that's really great. And I just wanna be completely upfront and start there that um, we think it's a great resource. I think that resource has imp uh, proved very um, important to the community during the pandemic. Um, and so, you know, to that end, um, we, were, we were the original, I think one of the original people that wrote the select board outlining some safety concerns last summer. Um, when the town hiking trail was installed and started to get publicized and, and uh, we started seeing a, a tremendous uh, amount of increased usage on, on the trail and use of the town forest. So we originally um, wrote the select board to uh, air some of those concerns about um, some of the safety issues that were presenting itself uh, on the road. Uh, that certainly, uh, the amount of traffic has certainly increased uh, in the pandemic time. And, you know, we presumably, uh, some of the pressures will be eased as um, our new normal starts to become um, known. And I think, I think some of those pressures will be relieved, but we've definitely seen an increase in traffic. Um, you know, I, I'm personally willing, we're, we're personally willing to work with the town um, to try to resolve the situation, whatever that looks like. What, as Paul had said, it's complicated. Um, and, you know, as Paul has sort of been coming up uh, and trying to suss out all the various options, uh, the option that I've advocated for um, the most is what I feel is the most um, environmentally sensitive and probably I would venture to guess the least costly option uh, for everyone involved. And that would uh, basically entail utilizing what's already in place. Um, so that would look like uh, an upgrade to the existing parking area. There's certainly space um, to increase the size of the parking area to accommodate larger traffic. Um, I understand there's some complications with, with the state, um, but they, you know, on the surface, they don't seem insurmountable. Um, and then it would look like uh, improving the signage along the roadway, uh, just to let people know that, that that's a traveled path um, and would include areas where people shouldn't be parking, uh, no parking signs, that's become an issue as well. Uh, and overall, I think just improvement of the roadway itself to bring it up to standard with the rest of uh, Middlesex class three roads will go a long way in terms of improving the safety. That would include um, widening the road a, a little bit, Im improving the road treadway, uh, possibly reducing some of the blind spots in the area. Um, and then maintaining the road in the winter, which is really the biggest concern, even though the traffic does tail off in the winter, there still is traffic and that, that increased this past winter. And being the plow man for the road, um, I know that the banks get pretty, pretty tall and the road surface can get quite icy. So it, um, it really does present a dangerous situation for people accessing the town forest, especially during the winter, um, but also in the summer too. So I just, I think there's a lot that can be done with what we have now in a very cost effective, quick way. Um, obviously it's gotten far more complex, but I just, I put that out there for consideration because I, I do feel that um, it'll go a long way to addressing any, any issue that we've raised. And that's, that's all I, that's all I had. 
Yeah, Brian, if I I'll jump in just for another couple minutes here. Um, so so the board is aware, you know, so the the biggest thing that that I find, um, you know, Steve and I that we found is is the trouble is number one, the complication that the town doesn't have any property to be able to uh, kind of facilitate any any parking or anything like that. And the other part of that is we've now assumed that that there is a, a bit of a liability issue. So the hard part with all this is it's it's we really can't turn to really can't turn a blind eye to anything at this point because we know that the traffic is increased and, and there are some safety issues. The other thing I want to point out is that um, with that parking area not being the towns, we we are not within within means of, of doing improvements, signage and, and things to that nature with, without at least their approval. So that's one thing to consider. And, and in my talks with the representative for the state, um, you know, anything that, that we do do there would, would have to go through them. And ultimately we, we are not allowed to, to claim any kind of ownership in regards to uh, advertising the town forest as, as that being a designated parking area that that's been made very clear to us. So unfortunately, all that does is muddy the waters more, but I just want everyone to be aware of that. So it eliminates some, some small talk about possible options. So Paul, remind me, remind me where the class three road ends. Does it end at that state parking lot? That's correct. And we've been using that as our turnaround, correct? For the correct. plow. So we really have two, well, we have a number of issues, but if we're going to improve the existing class three road, that's sort of a maintenance issue. We can, we can work at that. Is that correct? It, say that again, Peter. And winding that road a little bit going up that far. I, d I don't think the issue you're saying widen the road, the, the class three portion that exists currently. I thought Brian was saying that he thought the road need to, needed to be improved getting up to that parking lot. No, I, and I don't want to speak for him. I think that was in regards to the, the class four section because the, the, okay. the class three portion yeah. more or less mimics the, the rest of Notch Road. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm just trying to remind myself. So our initial thought on this was considering improving the class four section to provide access Peter, you went out. Peter? Yeah. Okay. We can't hear you. Hello? You there, Paul? I'm still here. Yeah, you cut out there, there, Peter. Okay, I was just saying what what we were talking about before was, and I'm and I'm sorry, I don't know if that's me cutting in and out or what's going on, but uh uh potentially improving the class four road section to allow access farther up and then creating parking farther up the hill correct and but we have no land up there beyond our three rod right of way that's correct and there's also no feasible way to create a turnaround up there for the plow truck if we were to improve or widen the road right not not without getting an easement from from either the state or from a property owner correct right right um because one of the ideas one of the ideas i was i was just thinking about hypothetically was uh if we were to improve the road farther up the three rod right of way would give us quite a bit of room potentially to park cars along the side of the road, right? It would, assuming that we weren't going to try and maintain that during the winter. Well, <laughs> there you I know go. it's, it's a very complicated thing. So my, my biggest concern and, and Brian and I have, have met and have, have shared some, some common, common complications with this is, you uh, with a lot of this you just can't have one without the other and that's that's what's making it difficult um 
you know, there, there's some ways of, of improving things, but by doing those small improvements, they, they ultimately do not eliminate the liability that, that is kind of there right now. And that's, that's kind of my, my biggest takeaway with all this. What do, you see this the, what do you see as the liability, Paul? Well, the biggest liability now is, is like Brian has, has kind of advocated for that with him maintaining the road uh, as a class four road, which, which he's allowed to as, as a property owner on the class four road, there's folks who are parking at the, the state parking lot, walking up or down. And, you know, it's, it's technically a town road being maintained by a private citizen, unfortunately, because we've, we've got a, a destination that these folks are, are walking to. Um, it, it creates a lot of times conditions that aren't ideal for trying to slow down for, for pedestrian traffic if you're in a vehicle. And like Brian has explained, when, when things are a little bit on the slippery side, even not during a rain event, but, but just during a, um, you know, when things have glazed over a little bit and the banks are high, because of the width of the road, there's not a, a lot of room there for, for pedestrians to move over in a vehicle to get by. So I, I certainly share his, his opinion about the road, the, the increased use in traffic, and then his maintaining it. Um, it. It becomes very complicated. So that's, yeah, that's what I'd say about that. Well, he has the, he has the option of petitioning the town to to upgrade the road and pay the cost of the upgrade, <laughs> which I gather he doesn't want to do. No, again, we didn't create the problem. That's why. That's mm. why we're. That's why we're asking the select board to um, right. to to take up the responsibility of creating a safe roadway for people to right. get in and out of a town resource. Um, you know, I. I am, you know, I'm happy to continue to maintain the road, but I, I do think it's, it presents a safety issue, particularly in the winter. You know, I talked to Paul a little bit about um, maybe creating in, within that right, road right away a, a little walking lane, uh, which would which would be helpful for three months out of the year. But the winter months is where that would not be helpful. But I do feel like if the road is widened and the town is putting gravel and pushing the banks back to keep the surface safer, that goes along. That's like just walking on any other road in Middlesex at that point. Um, so I, I, I feel a heck of a lot better about that versus the luge that I create sometimes with high snow banks that people can't get out of. If I start, you know, we start coming down the road and they're in the road and their dogs are running everywhere. It creates it's it's not good for anybody involved, and we have had a couple of close calls over the years. Brian, Steve, Martin here. I'd like to interject just a little bit. Um, if we improve that road and put that up to class three standards, we're going to need a place to turn around, which we don't have. And you and I had talked before about being able to acquire some of your land one way or another. That wasn't totally discussed, but I think that would probably be the best solution. If we're going to improve that road, we need to have a place to turn around and we can create that parking lot at the same time. And that would take care of all of the issues. Yeah, I mean, as far as a turnaround at the bottom of the driveway, I have no problem giving the town what they would need to, to turn the plow truck around there. It's actually pretty, it's pretty close. It would need, it would need some tree cutting and some, you know, a, a little bit of a circular area to create more space. You know, as far as the, as far as the a parking lot is concerned up higher, um, I, you know, I think to the extent that there's a problem that needs to be solved, I'm, I'm willing to work with the town to figure that out, but that's a much larger project. Um, and I think, you know, I think that would, I, I can't commit to anything tonight, but I, you know, I think it would be something that we would have to look at and see. Um, but, you know, as far as a turnaround at the bottom of the driveway to upgrade the road to address 
the safety issue in phases, by all means, we I would commit to that tonight. But as far as a parking area up higher, um, you know, I want to be respectful of my neighbors. I know um, they've, they've aired some serious concerns with that proposal. Um, so I, I think that would just need more discussion. Yeah. Well, here's so here's here's the question. Our our experience with snowplow turnarounds is that. By the time we create a satisfactory turnaround, we've created a de facto parking lot. Wouldn't you say that's true, Steve? Yes. Paul? Yeah. So, right. so I think what we're thinking, Brian, is, and I, you know, I walked up there, it was some time ago, and I can't remember exactly what it looks like at the bottom of your driveway, but if we're gonna create a turnaround there, essentially we're gonna create a parking lot there. And a lot of that's gonna be within our within our three rod right away, but some of it isn't. And I don't know, uh, I don't know whether the state would be willing to give us an easement to create a turnaround slash parking lot and or uh, you would be willing if everybody, if, if people on both sides, you and the state gave us space, we would have a parking lot and a turnaround there. And I mean, that would mean we were you know, upgrading and widening the road up to that point, which I think would solve a lot of the problem if we're willing to do that. One thing I just want to, oh, I'm sorry, Peter. Go I, ahead. I, I want to, what I do want to throw out is, is I would be, and I think the board would share the same feeling that what I would not feel comfortable of doing is setting a precedent by um, maintaining a, a road, especially a class four road to a certain level without it actually being upgraded, at least on paper, to, to such a standard. Because no, my, yeah. Well, my okay. presumption Great. would be if we're, if we're doing this, that we're, oh, yeah. we're upgrading the road to a okay. road up to the bottom of Brian's driveway. Thank which you. Would okay. Be right. I, I think that this is something that we're going to have to get yeah. all parties involved and, and have a meeting on site. I, I don't think these issues are going to be solved and, tonight. You know, we have to we have to figure out that would, what that would cost if we would do it. And, you know, this is just preliminary discussion, but we would have to before we go any further. The 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 next step would be uh, to figure out what we would need as an easement from Brian and what we would need from an easement of the state. If the state's unwilling to give us any kind of an easement, then we'd be uh, we'd be looking for Brian to give us an easement, but. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're gonna we're gonna upgrade the road at our expense. I don't think that's an unreasonable request and a way to resolve this. And I'm not committing that, that we would even be able to do that. Right. We have to look at the cost and what it not only the cost of of improving the road and creating the turnaround, but the cost of maintaining that over time, obviously. Peter, can I say something? Yes. So are you asking to begin the formal process because the formal legal process of upgrading that road, which is what you'd have to do. That's a, as you know, that requires notification, right. uh, publication. No. And I'm just saying that it's a, it, it is, it does take time. So I just want to be clear to get that in the minutes, what you're oh, asking. No, no, I, I, I know all of that. I would say that's all premature right now. Right. Exactly. I mean, we, have, we have to figure out, we have to figure out the turnaround situation first at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I think we have to figure out, especially in these times, uh, the cost of upgrading the road. You know, how many how many man hours, machine hours, whatever it's going to take to upgrade that road and get some idea of what the what the annual cost is going to be and make sure we think that's reasonable. Going going back, um, you know, when we had discussions some time ago, I think the select board agreed that we certainly bear some responsibility for creating this problem. I mean, not that we intended to create a problem, but by, by having the town buy the town forest, putting in trails, making it more attractive, we've created more, uh, more traffic up that road and exacerbated this problem. And that we, we committed to be part of the solution, whether we would be part of the total solution or not was un, undetermined. But I think for me, I guess, and I'd like to hear from other people because I gather some of our other guests are here to uh, hear about this also. Um, 
I think we need to, I think we need to, and I'm not trying to put you on the, on the spot tonight, Brian, but contact the state, uh, meet with you, kind of have Paul lay out what he would think that turnaround would uh, potentially look like and what it would encompass and see what kind of an easement that would require and if you would be willing to do that. And the same. Cutting out, Peter. Pardon me, my name is Michael Hall. I happen to live right across the street from that parking lot. To I think you're taking on um, a much bigger problem. Than... I'm sorry, who's speaking, please? This is Michael Hall. Okay, thank you, Michael. Can Go you ahead. Hear me? Yes, I live across the street from the um, parking lot that exists now. And I just want to say, um, I think you're taking on a lot bigger issue than you're thinking. And it's going to be an unfair burden on Brian because that parking lot is going to be <laughs> rather um, a management issue. Okay. I've watched people park in the winter in that lot and they have no regard for the snowplow for the most part. Believe me, we, we understand that. That isn't the only place we experience that problem. Okay. <laughs> you, got, you also have drainage issues that would have to be addressed, but I think that's nothing compared to the people management problem. Well, you know, <laughs> we've 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 got we've got what we've got. What we're trying to do is uh, is make the situation better. I'm not saying we can make it perfect. We can't create a paved parking lot with a guard up there controlling who goes in there and <laughs> doesn't go in there. So, you know, people are going to do whatever people are going to do, but. Uh, you know, we can put we, if it's a if it's a turnaround that we create, we can put warning signs there saying, you know, you can't park there when there's snow because you've got to leave room for the plow to turn around, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't guarantee that's going to work, but that's about all we can do. All all I'm suggesting, and I'm 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 willing to listen to any other ideas people have, but if we're going to do something to solve this problem. We've got to have some kind of a concept of what we're going to do, and that, that I guess, is the best. It seems to me to be a stretch to go up uh, further past Brian's driveway up the hill to the foot. We we walked up there with the with a fellow from the state back. When was that, Paul? Uh, I think that <clears throat> that was February. -ish. It, it it was before the, the, winter. the pandemic stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and it's no, like you said, it's it's not feasible, nor nor would it be, yeah, nor nor would it be financially responsible to do it either. So, this is Liz. Can I hear from Steve about his email and that the other entrance? Yes, uh, I was. I just, I, my name is Steve Jufri. I live uh, uh, at four thirty one. So I'm just the other side of the parking lot currently. Yeah. Uh, the log cabin you pass and you go up through. Yep. Uh, I have I have several I have many concerns about this. Um, and we'll just, uh, along with what Mike said, I'd like to add that half of all the uh, number of houses on Notch Road exist in the last half mile of that road. And some of those houses were built back when the building codes didn't have setback. Uh, scenarios and um, they can't even keep their uh, yeah. doors and windows open in the summer because of the dust and everything that's blown. One house is literally uh, maybe 12 feet off the road. Uh, so so you really got a severe quality of life issue starting to happen here because the amount of traffic has picked up considerably. Now there, there is the old logging road that originally was put in in the 40s, the, run, the 
goes, it used to come off from Notch Road just behind Sid Bloom's house. And it, it wrapped around the, the, the gravel pit and it goes up through the center the valley, past an old school bus to the second cabin and continues right up to where the first cabin is and where the trailhead is. Uh, that road is a road that you got an asset in the town forest, and I know he is here uh, tonight, that the town forest has been looking at potentially logging that uh, the forest. That's the only way that the logs can come out is on this logging road. Also, they'll do who owns a, a chunk of land in between the town gravel pit and the forest is also looking to log. And the only way they can get logs off a good chunk of their property is to use that same logging road, which would at this point for logging purposes, exit through uh, the back end of the gravel pit and out because uh, uh, where the old road went uh, that's over close to the notch road, I it just wouldn't be any way up right now to, to get up through there, but they would um, go right out through the back of the gravel pit. To me, the, there's a stream that does cross the property, uh, that road twice, once on the town property and once on Villeneuve's property. Um, log, the logging companies can't just drag or drive through these streams. They have to put a bridge network in to get those trucks in and out. If part of that contract, that they were to leave those bridges in place uh, and they left the road at the end but free, they would have built your trail network um, all the way up to, to the what's now the current trailhead. And that's a very easy walk through there that all families can do where the Chase Mountain itself is uh, a little steeper and I, some of the younger uh, people may not be able to go up the Chase Mountain Trail. Um, to me, the parking then, as you go into the gravel pit, you have what became sort of a lower part of that pit when Wendell did the excavating up there probably 12, 15 years ago. In that lower section, you could park right there and Paul did sort of open up a road and he got within about 40 yards, actually, of the old logging road right off that area that I would suggest for parking. Uh, to me, that's, that, that would kill birds of one stone. And yes, you got the stream issue to deal with, and you would need an equipment um, from Villeneuve uh, to, to cross that property. But Villeneuve is going to need an ease of it to get their logs out through the gravel pit. I mean, we have a, a joint situation here where that regardless of this parking on Notch Road, you're, you're going to have to address that logging road because that is the only way out. You can't get the logs out on Notch Road. So as, as you may know, there, there's rules with regard to uh, removing logs across a neighbor's neighbor's property. And I, I don't have those, I don't have those rules in front of me, but, but but basically, they have the right to, uh, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, they have the right to, we have the right to uh, bring out logs across their property, and also they have the right to bring out logs across our property in the gravel pit in a reasonable manner. Is that correct? I think it's limited to the winter. I'm sorry? Yes. Right. But that doesn't, that doesn't create public access across Villeneuve's land. I mean, if we were going to develop that as a public access, we'd have to have an easement or, and I don't know how they would feel about that, all the, all the walking traffic being directed across across their land. I haven't talked to them or I'm not aware that anybody has talked to them. But when I, what I would say to you is that the purchase of such an easement would be far cheaper than what you're looking at in the development of this road up above and um, and also the fact that you probably would, are going to have to acquire some land in one way or another to create that turnaround up above. That this would actually be, be potentially a cheaper um, way around. Plus, 
a quality of life issue that's going on for the neighbors on the last half mile, which is literally half your house of, of the entire Notch Road. Packed I, in. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, <laughs> for me, for me, I'm certainly willing to uh, willing to explore that. We have. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We have talked in the past about using uh, the lower area of the gravel pit for uh, for parking. So, you know, that could potentially work. It's it's quite a long uh, quite a long hike all the way up that hill. It may be more gradual, but it's quite a long hike. It it adds it would add probably a half mile to the hike that they're currently doing right now. But, yeah. it's, but it's also for a person that doesn't have time to go all the way to the top of Chase Mountain, um, that could be a nice hike in. They also could have the option of continuing on to the ponds and then coming back versus the hike up the, the main mountain. A good amount of the traffic that we currently see is actually going to the ponds, not necessarily always up on the Chase Mountain. Uh, a lot of people go up to spend time well, at the but listen folks i'm, I'm uh <laughs> we're we're way past our time for this evening i think what we've i think what we've we've figured out is is once again and this always seems to be where we where we get when we talk about these issues we've got a number of problems uh we've got another problems we're trying to address and um we've got at least two two potential solutions probably more so I don't know what I don't know what the next uh, step in this process is. What would you suggest, Paul and Steve? Uh, I'm I'm certainly willing to to try and track down a contact for Villa News. I'll you know I'll try and get together with Sarah and, and maybe tap into uh, Marika's knowledge about the situation. If we can at least explore that option, it's certainly one thing. Um, you know, but then of course there's there's the issue of of, of constructing this in the gravel pit and obviously you know gaining that access to villa news and, and the logging which which would be on the trail that'd be intended to use but i i'm yeah. certainly willing to explore that the, the main thing for me with this meeting was to get get the folks who are around involved number one because we we can't have them come to a meeting any other way that way there we we can at least keep this thing rolling and and at least try and at least come up with a, a game plan moving forward. So I, I'm I'm going to continue to work diligently on it uh, with with everybody what I would, involved. What I would suggest what I would suggest getting to the question of getting to the question of cost, which is which is always the issue, is to try and uh, to try and estimate what it would take to uh, to improve the road and create the turnaround, and at the same time think about what the cost would be. Uh, to develop the access up the old logging road from the pit. I don't want to be building bridges across streams, I can tell you that, but, you know, maybe it's culverts. I don't know what it would have to be. I think that this is Steve here. I think that we should, I'll let Paul go ahead and, you know, make some initial contacts with Villeneuve. Uh, I know Dave Villeneuve, if he's the one that still has that. But anyway, if we can, look at that avenue as one of our things but i think that we all need to get together on site at some time as soon as we can and i think that'll happen sooner than later but in the meantime we can look at these avenues and maybe try to get some prices together but it's going to take an on-site meeting to to uh oh i don't i don't disagree but i'd i'd like to have uh some kind of a proposal to discuss before we you know, like if, if none of this is feasible and there's no no reason to have an on-site meeting because there's nothing to discuss. So, right. Let's let's do our homework and then uh, we'll let we'll let everybody know. Sarah, you've got a you've got a list to of the neighbors. Do I have a list of the neighbor? I mean, I have a list of the people who showed up tonight. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good start, and we can make sure if there's somebody else we should be reaching out to. We do, but I I agree when we have a proposal and some thoughts about it then uh that's the time to have a walk around and and uh, look at it with everybody there right nope. i mean i would just i would just warn everybody i have to tell you uh what's going on in the world today and in the in the in the town world we're very worried about being very short of money so <laughs> the idea the idea that we're going to be uh this year engaging in any serious 
uh, projects, I think it just, I, I don't see it. I don't see it's going to happen. So uh, we've got, we've got time to time to work on this. And I realize that doesn't bring around, bring around any, any quick fix to this, but uh, you know, it's just something we got to work on as diligently and as fast as we can and see what we can come up with. Peter, yep. I agree with you. it's not going to be a quick fix because we don't have the money to get in there this year at all, or even in the 2021 budget. It's just not in there. But I think we can at some point reach resolution anyway with what we want to do. Agreed. Any any other comments, anybody? Visitors, guests? I do think a walking path along the side, you do have a three rod right away, correct? Who is that, Tom? Um, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Okay, yeah. I'm yeah. Tom, Steve, Steve oh, Jameson. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we got you. All right, good. I'm Steve Jeffrey's son. He's at 431, the log cabin that spoke earlier. You yes. You have a three rod right away currently, right? Going up that class four portion. Right. Yes. So a walkway, you know, currently it's whips and what have you right after the um, state parking lot. You know, a walkway could be fairly easily cleared to at least get that blind curve addressed. Um, that I think is the, the largest portion probably for you, Brian, in terms of coming down and around that corner where somebody potentially could get hit. Um, I'm not so sure I see the liability standpoint. There's a lot of places in Vermont with um, dips and curves and what have you. I've, I've addressed this before with the state on some issues I've had with my property. Um, so I, I, I don't think there's a liability there, but there is definitely a concern for moving that parking lot up above um, past Brian's property or onto his property. Um, so I, I agree with my father on some of that, but I do think you could probably make a walking path pretty easily that somebody could get through in a fairly easy manner. Uh, agreed winter is going to be different but folks that are going up there realize that they're going up there for exercise they're probably going in with snow shoes in the winter so that path could somehow get by those properties yeah the problem of course with a with a path next to the road is once it gets winter time and there's a snow bank unless somebody wants to go up there with snowshoes they're going to walk right up the part that brian plows probably unfortunately right. yep no nope. bank will be in the walkway. Yeah. Yeah, the snow bank will be in the walkway. I agree. Hey, guys, we really need a, I'm sorry, but we're, we're we, this isn't the only item on our agenda tonight, to say the least. So I'm going to cut off for the, the discussion for tonight. We're going to work on this and uh, we'll be back in touch. And if any of you have any other uh, thoughts, communicate with us through, through Sarah would be great, or you can call Paul anytime. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Have thank a good you. evening. Okay, so uh, moving along, we're now we're now going to have a discussion about the class four section of North Slash Each Bear Swamp Road to provide improved access to Hunger Mountain Trail, etc. And we did receive uh, a letter from a property owner up there, which I believe all the select board members received. What's, what's letter was that? I'm sorry, Mary? Which letter was that? Was that attached to one of Sarah's, um, Sarah's emails? In my us? email, it said, it said John and Megan. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. So Peter, if you don't mind, I'll I'll just jump in here and I'll I'll cut to the short and sweet of of the whole purpose of it, if that's all right. Yes. Um, so I obviously we've been working with with the conservation committee and and more directly the trails committee ab about the beaver activity that we've got out there on North and East Bear Swamp, whatever wherever that ends up actually being. Um, and then after that, I, I was later contacted by by a, a Walter, excuse me, I don't remember his last name, but he is the person in charge of um, taking care of all the access 
<clears throat> the state owned property trailheads. Um, Walter contacted me basically to, to kind of form a relationship between the road crew and, and also the uh, conservation and trails committee. Um, Walter basically touched, touched base so that we could start some, some kind of form of communication so that going forward, we can, we can along with the trails committee and conservation commission uh, improve the access out there obviously we we knew even last year and the year before that that the road has has become pretty deteriorated and i think a lot of low clearance vehicles aren't able to make it out there so this this is walt walters and and i share the same sentiment and i i think steve will too um we're we're not looking to upgrade that that portion of road from north bear swamp to the hunger mountain trailhead um, what, what would be ideal, and I think we talked about before, would be to um, upgrade the condition of, of the road, uh, to, to bring it up to at least where vehicles can traverse it uh, safely, not have to worry about, you know, a, a lower clearance vehicle damaging an oil pan or anything like that. Um, they're not, they're not asking us to do anything, but what I told Walter from the state was I would touch base with the select board to see what what the the board would number one be be willing to do if, if anything at all they're they're not asking us to but just put the feelers out there and I told them I would make contact with you guys because the state recently acquired about seven like six to eight hundred acres you'll have to excuse I don't know what it is but between six and eight hundred acres out there where the Hunger Mountain Trailhead is um, so I just that, of, that's the whole purpose of this. What, what about the beaver situation, though, Paul? So the beaver situation, Mary, I don't Neil. know her name. Neilan, thank you. Neil. Mary, Mary Neilan has made contact with, with some folks over uh, at the beaver management uh, end of things at the state. At some point, because obviously I, I think, number one, they're, they're short-staffed. Number two, I'm sure their funding hasn't grown any larger since since all of this has has opened up um but she has been in contact and they do have it on their list as as liz had had pointed out the the beavers have i mean they've made quite a home there not that they hadn't before but but it's getting to the point where if something doesn't change and and one of those dams would let go it, it would be very dangerous downstream and i don't say that lightly it, it would be bad um so to my mind, you say it's very dangerous. Uh, actually, um, it's not that bad. Um, I actually pulled for you out the beaver dam out of the pipe in the fall of last year. Uh, they re rebuilt it in two days. Um, and it didn't let that much water out, quite frankly. It wasn't that large. There's a secondary dam that backs up on what they've done. Um, so it's actually only a piece in front of their main dam. It's problematic, I won't deny it. Yeah, no, Rupert, and I, I appreciate that. But really what it is is if, if that secondary dam up above were to let go, you look at the, the amount of the, the size of the water table in that basin there. If, if at any point that were to let go, that, that could be pretty bad. Not, not the one in front of the culvert itself. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but, but anyways, select board members, that, that's just the, the quick history on this. And I know that Steve and I had talked about just bringing some some reclaimed gravel that we had in the in the town pit, bringing it out there on on. We always use the word on a, on a rainy day or when things slow down, but that that has gone so far away it's not even funny. So um, that that would be something that I'd say I think would be a worthwhile thing because it would just be strictly with material we already had, um, and and there's no commitment there to to do any kind of upgrading in regards to a legal status of the road or anything like that. It's just making it so that that point is is no longer dangerous. Are well, we talking about the section that goes from Rita Ricketts's house over toward the trailhead parking lot? Is that what we're talking about? Paul? I'm, I'm not familiar, but but I know, I know Rupert on here and that's that that would be the side it'd be from north bear swamp over to the trailhead right it's not it's, it's not, not from Peter record since mary it's not it's it's the other side 
So it's from Rupert's house over to the trailhead. Correct. Rupert and yeah, Rupert. Right. Rupert. And it's been it's been swampy up there for a long time. I said it it, too. <laughs> right now it's, it's a lot worse, and it's the it's the the material that was in the road over time is washed away. So there are big sections of ledge there, which are what makes the makes it impassable right now. That's and right but now, again, our again our I believe, and if I help me out here, select board members, but we've had uh, we've had a number of discussions over the last few years about making sure that we at least make our class four roads uh, passable. And by passable, I don't mean walking passable. I mean passable by a, by a vehicle if that's if that's possible, and try and maintain them and improve them a little bit over time. But in no way in no way upgrade them in any way just do a little maintenance a little culvert work here and there where we need to so we so we keep what we have we don't lose what we have right yeah that's my recollection peter yeah, yeah. Right. and aren't there um aren't there beaver mitigation um processes you know aside from like killing the beavers which i'm sure does not work nor is it something that we probably want to do but um isn't there like something you can do? I remember seeing that. Maybe Mary Nealon brought it or something. There was like a thing you could do. Yeah, there, like there is. There's, there's money Sorry. solves all problems. I'm here. I can, speak Mary, to that. I can speak to that a little bit. In fact, I spoke with someone, um, Tyler Brown from Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department this morning. And whether they can mitigate that I think they can put up beaver fences, but it depends on how much flow there is going through the structure. And it's easier to put in a beaver fence if there's a wetland above the structure and below, but there's a stream channel below. So that may be a little bit more difficult. And he told me that he's still a couple weeks away from being able to make a site visit. So I think we'll know more in a couple weeks. I also just wanted to mention um, in terms of the, the Middlesex Trails Committee, we feel like that section of fourth class road is really important for recreation. And um, I, don't, I don't know how other people feel. I don't necessarily need to drive a car through there, but it would be nice if we had, you know, six or eight feet where you could walk through there and yeah, people bike. use it for biking and walking and hiking. It would be a real shame not to have that loop. Well, the section from East Bear Swamp to that is definitely not passable with by regular car, that's for sure. Right. Uh, and Dan, right. is that the part that goes from the bottom of your driveway into where you park in the summer? No, the other way from Mary's. Right. Okay, got from it. The Comans up. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other problem with it is that at this point, to do that would be a huge amount of work um, from the parking lot to the um, um, to the, to the to the west, yeah, the Colmans. It's it's uh, it is in very very bad shape, but nice for biking. The trouble is, it's being used a lot for by people in uh, four wheel drive vehicles now. Yeah, and they get in there in early spring and they go roaring through there and, and tear it up. Make a mess. Make a terrible mess. The middle section right now, before the parking lot, is 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 two foot of mud. Yeah, and I'm wondering if, if the road were to be upgraded so a vehicle could get through there, if it could be fenced off or blocked off during mud season. Yeah. People really do make a mess of it. And that was something that Walter had, had mentioned would, would be to work in conjunction with them because there's, there's no actual houses out there. Um, that, that that could be a possibility too. So his main focus was especially because I think 99% of people access that from the North Bear Swamp side. That's the side he was definitely focused on. And it sounds like he had spoke with Rupert and Janet and they had a good conversation. So I, I think there's there's not a lot of, um, there's no animosity on this. I think it's, it's a, a big 
uh, asset to both the town and the state. And, and I think because of the way that it's laid out, it, it can be done fairly reasonably. But, but everyone's right in regards to on the East Bear Swamp side. It's that, that part there to, to do anything would be pretty significant, e even just using material we had. Absolutely. But it's something we can potentially work on over time. Right? Absolutely. Every year. Right. Sure. Type of thing. I mean, I, I just, uh, I just, I mean, I can remember that that road in the old days was was eminently uh, passable, and it sure as hell isn't anymore. And not that, not that I want to drive through there in my sports car, but uh, keeping it, keeping it, keeping it open, and keeping it so uh, it can be used, I think, is is well worthwhile. And the and the biking and hiking being the probably the probably the primary thing. Peter, you never struck me as a sports car kind of guy. Oh, I am big time. <laughs> you want to come to the track with me? Let's go. Absolutely. This is another <laughs> part of Peter that you might not want to get to know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to drive your Mercedes through that road, Peter? No, not good for the 74 Mercedes either. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but, I, but I also... Uh, I also I, I uh, agree wholeheartedly with the idea of uh, blocking the road off so that we don't get the so that we don't get the mud season damage because that will just undo any work we do. All it all it takes is people flying through there in their big mud trucks and it just rips the hell out of everything. It right. used to be posted at the bottom of our driveway. I mean, yeah. the, the amount of people that Rupert pulls out who decide to try it is ridiculous. Maybe you should just leave them there. I, that's what I keep that saying. That solve the problem. You're stupid enough to do it, you need to stay there. Yeah, well, I, 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 you know, I, unfortunately, again, you know, if, if money was no object and we had, we had loads of money and loads of time of which we have neither, uh, I could promise you we could, we could do a lot of things up there. But the bottom line is, I think working with the state to try and solve the beaver problem and then trying to fix fix the worst parts around the ledge and whatever and gradually gradually make that better is going to be what we need to do and block it off put up put up uh, put up signs or actually you know block the block the road like we used to on McCullough uh, years ago. I think you have to four wheelers when they want to go someplace they're going to go. Oh yeah. Well, the four wheelers are bad, but the but the but the trucks are way worse. Yeah. The four wheelers make a mess. Motorcycles make a mess. Snowmobiles can make a mess, but nothing like nothing like those uh, those trucks. And I don't know. You know, they're they're always looking for places to go, and that's one of the they one of the are. places they have yeah. on their radar screen. And that ledge. Oh. Four wheelers. I didn't know there were trucks up there. Yeah. So if it's good with the board, um, I, I, I'm going to plan on at least taking some measurements uh, and seeing what, what our time would, would cost us uh, with the material that we have in our town pit to at least bring that to a point where it's, I, I want to call it safe, uh, just to the trailhead itself from, from the ending of North Bear Swamp as an exploration thing, and I'm happy to bring that back to the board and go from there. Yeah. yeah. Can oh, be a good yeah. Can I just oh, add a couple of quick comments here? One is, um, you know, maybe the state will cost share since. Who, who that, is? Oh, that's Todd. No, this is Michael Levine. Michael. Oh, sorry. Where are you, Michael? I didn't see you. I don't know. Maybe I'm hey. on. The, maybe I'm on the next that's screen. Huh? I'm looking. At, I'm looking at him. You got to okay. pull your screen back and forth, Mary. I know. So. Um, Go ahead, yeah. So one thought, uh, just make sure that um, you have these two things separated in your mind because the beaver pond problem is past where we're talking about access to the trailhead. So, so it's two different issues on, you know, what's ostensibly the same road. But I wonder if the state would cost share since they're looking for access, better access for the public to their trails now that they own that parcel. So that, you know, it's one option the other they've is unwilling i would tell you they've been unwilling to do that in the past when we've approached them oh. we've asked them a lot and okay. they've always 
The, the odds are they don't have they don't have more money now than they did a year ago. Right? <laughs> so. That's a well, The second part is, um, yeah, the, the, that other stretch from Coleman's to the trailhead is bad. But I guess from the trails committee perspective, if there was some way to prioritize at least making it passable for pedestrians and bicycles rather than wait until it might be passable for a vehicle. I would like to see the town prioritize that based on the trail committee recommendation. Yeah. Of course, if we're gonna, we're gonna take our truck up there full of material, it's gonna, it's gonna dump material the width of the truck. I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing with the equipment that we'd use, unfortunately, it, yeah. Michael, what do you mean by possible for bike and pedestrian? I mean, other than the beaver pond, right now it's possible. Well, it has big ponds. Yeah, but for, for, but for walking and for a bicycle, it's not really a problem. Uh, it's rough. Yeah, it's probably more of a problem for a bicycle than a pedestrian at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, it has little ponds in it now. It's passable, but, but small improvements, especially on that kind of level section, would help a lot. That big without it necessarily being being uh, drivable with the vehicle. That's all. I know Paul's been up there a lot. He's very familiar with what that looks like. <laughs> well, I I agree that the priority is as much as it as much as it irritates me that the uh, the, the state acquires land, the state built that parking lot, but they are no interest in helping us maintain access to it. I think it's in everybody's interest to prioritize that, uh, that situation first, maybe. Well, and I'm certainly willing to reach out to Walter again. I mean, I had a great conversation with him, so I'll make sure first and foremost, reach out to him especially and, uh, and see what, what uh, pennies might be in the, the bank there. Yeah. You don't remember his full name, Paul? Yes, I have it. I, it's Walter oh. Opuszynski. O-P-U-S-Z-Y-N-S-K-I. And his... No one I didn't remember it. <laughs> well, how about I give you his phone mine. number? He's Walter, right? Uh, his, his phone number is 802 476 0182. Well, there you go. Thanks, Rupert. So, Paul, you don't think um, you could make a path through there like four feet wide that <laughs> wouldn't take very long? You really feel like that? <laughs> Unfortunately, is, I, I don't have any equipment have with a any, bucket. We don't the, have anything the, that's four feet wide. <laughs> no, the, the smallest bucket I have is five feet wide, unfortunately, and then the truck is going to be much bigger than that. So it, it, it'd be essentially the, the size of the, the width of the truck. Paul, um, would it be, I don't know if you'd be willing to, but would you want me to help you with that since I have the equipment to deal with that? If you supply the material, I'd yeah. say I, it, it's going to be, and I appreciate that. It, the biggest thing would be the uh, the good graces of the board, and and the biggest thing would be looking at time and resources on the highway department's end, which I'll be honest is is not not yeah. very open at this point. That's the hard part. I mean, I'm just saying, if if you you can provide the material, I can probably move the material around for you on that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd let the board speak on that behalf, or, or Steve especially. Yeah. yeah. Paul, let's you and I uh, get together and, and go over this anyway and make some site visits and then come up with something. Perfect. Sounds good to me. And, and maybe we'll get a hold of you, Rupert, at, at that time, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and if something that the Middlesex Trails Committee could help out on, just let us know. I mean, we could provide labor, potentially. Definitely. And I'll keep you in the loop anyway, Mary, just so you guys are on board with that for sure. And if we hear back from the, from the Beaver people, let us know. Mm -hmm. And I, that's, I that's, well, that's a different issue. I understand, but I am, I am concerned about that Beaver situation. Yeah, but I really do not want to see them killed either. No, I don't think they would. I don't think the, there was any intent to kill them. I, I not that I'm aware of. Right. 
the that's worst. another thing, Paul. I can help you take out the clean out the call book because I my machine's right here, so you wouldn't need to bring a machine up. Absolutely. Now that okay. that I would definitely take you up on. Thank you. Okay. I mean, the problem is the problem is as you said though, Rupert is those those little four legged ing furry engineers are going to plug that culvert up so fast you'd have you'd have to sit there with the case of beer and your machine on it, to keep it clear. It's you a, bring, you bring me the case of beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing the work they did. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. No, oh, it's 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 amazing and. Uh, you know, I, I love the idea of the beavers, but by the same token, they can be a, a wicked nuisance when they try and go in the wrong place. Anyway, let's let's see what the let's see what the state comes. I mean, there there are various uh, various devices to uh, a uh, alleviate the dam being built any higher by put. Essentially, I've I've seen they call them beaver preventers. They're like fairly long culverts, and they stretch either side of the dam. And they prevent the beavers from raising the dam any higher because the water just runs out through the culvert. And somehow, because it's far enough from the dam on either side, I guess they can't figure out how to plug it up. Yeah. But I've but I've seen those work in a number of yeah. places. Um, I don't know. I'm not a beaver expert, but I've I've seen oh, various yeah. solutions. But the fence, I'm skeptical of the fence just because I don't know how that how that would work. But maybe it could work, Mary. I don't know. If you fence them off from the culvert, they couldn't jam the culvert. Yeah, but won't they just won't they just run around the fence and I don't know. Well, I, don't I know they've got several different different methods and I think they choose it based on the situation. So yeah, it's all right. situational. Right. Right. So that's about it. I'll I'll make sure Steve and I get together and uh, and we'll go forward with at least getting getting some preliminary stuff together and and get some more information from everybody involved. Okay. Thanks everybody. Okay. Nice to have Thank a you, big crowd. Thank, 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 Thank you. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Good night. Good night. You too. Sounds like we need some road money, guys. <laughs> yeah. No question about it. Maybe maybe Liz has money. That's a joke, Liz. <laughs> she's I got a microphone. She's, she's not even she responding. Raise money for Capstone. Um, okay, we're we're way behind now, so let's move along. Um, the Middlesex Conservation Committee is requesting us to appoint John Udis to the commission. Action likely. Is there a motion? I'll make it. Okay, Mary makes it second. I'll second, second that. Okay, thanks, Steve. So it's been moved and seconded to appoint, uh, excuse me, appoint John Udis to the uh, Middlesex Conservation Commission. All board members in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, we've appointed them. Great, thank and, you. That uh, brings us up to our full nine members on conservation. That's again. great. Was it, isn't sorry, John you just on the, isn't he on? John is on the trails committee now, the subcommittee. Yeah. But he's got his finger going in front of he's his face. To, he's trying to clean off his camera so we can see him better. <laughs> oh, yes. He's on. Does he want to say anything in honor of his being appointed? Yeah, John, you want to, yeah, any kind of. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You're muted. No. You're <laughs> muted, John. I think he's okay. trying to unmute himself. Can you unmute him, Sarah? Sarah can do that. I think he yeah, has like an iPad or something. He's swiping. <laughs> well, he's trying to find the place where he unmutes the microphone. Can you unmute him? There. There you go, John. Yeah. All right. <laughs> A little bit slow. Thank you. I appreciate it. Looking forward to being part of the Conservation Committee. Well, thank you for your service, as I say. We appreciate it. Yeah, welcome. We need and, He's yes. the person who walked almost everywhere in Middlesex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have my dog back soon, so people will recognize me again. Yeah. But, okay, John. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to do thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, okay Sarah. Phoenix is is not uh, is not with us. I'm here. No, he is. There's oh, he is. 
Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Oh, there you are. I got gotcha. you. Are my screenies right below John? <laughs> so, uh, Sarah, <clears throat> could you give us just give us an overview of what this request is and what it entails? So, so I think uh, Phoenix can probably tell you, but we he uh, was under the impression that when uh, Mike Pelcher and um, Russ Bennett came in to give their presentation about the Red Hen complex and what they had for their general overall views for this area, that when Russ said, you know, <clears throat> you can get a grant, a 700, you can get a grant to put in a hitching post at Red Hen, that that would, that we would have written a letter to the state saying we approve or we would like to have this. So I, that wasn't my understanding, but I think that this is what this meeting is about. Um, Phoenix would like to ask the board uh, for a letter to the to V Tran saying yes, uh, we would like a hitching post in front of uh, V uh, front of Red Hen, and that would um, apparently generate a five hundred dollar grant from V Trans that for that hitching post. And I think Phoenix can probably describe where that money goes after that. Okay, Phoenix. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, sorry for the confusion. I wish I had just come to the select board meeting last. November. Um, it was a crazy time for me. Uh, but so we got you now. We are here now, though. So thanks for having me. Um, so um, yeah, so the, let's take a step back. The meeting that I missed was November 19th, the launch of uh, several hitching posts in the area, including um, Northfield, um, Montpelier, and Middlesex. Um, that happened on the 16th of November. Um, so the hitching post is installed. It's it's outside of Red Hen. Um, I've spoken in depth with uh, Liza and uh, and Russ about having it there, and they were very supportive from the very beginning. And so um, I worked with them. And one of the parts of the process um, is you know actually reaching out to the town, and they're like, oh, we'll do it, no problem. And um, and so I was under the assumption uh, that Russ had worked that out with y'all. Anyways, um, it was a busy time and it got slipped through the cracks. So I'm following up on it. Um, how it works is basically it's the application is the very short letter. Um, it's a just a letter saying that, yes, we're in support of this as a community effort. Um, it can be environmentally based, socially based, um, supporting local business, whatever take you feel most aligned with. Um, then that's sent to um, uh, Dan, uh, I'm blanking on his last name right now, um, at Go Vermont, the Go Vermont program at, at VTrans. Um, basically, they have money allotted for these community transportation grants, which are in $500 increments. Um, and uh, they can be uh, received once per fiscal year. So we would, this is still the same fiscal year as last year. So um, we can, still have that go through um, but basically so what i'm asking for is that the select board uses the template that i have that plainfield wrote up or whatever modify it however you'd like and just send it to the um the person dan courier is his name um at vtrans i have his address and everything when that money comes back it's sent to the town clerk um and then that goes towards uh paying for the cost of um, assembly, installation, my time, the hitching post, Vermont's time. So we're actually a nonprofit now. And so uh, that money goes towards furthering um, our efforts around the state. Um, and yeah, so that's the first, first item. But then don't we assume responsibility for maintaining that in the future? No. So the, the, Basically, the Hitching Post Vermont is uh, like essentially licensing the establishment or town or wherever it's going to use the Hitching Post. And so I, the, the $500 pays for the, the materials and the installation and, and communication and all that stuff. Um, then I would actually, main, uh, we, it's, it's, I'm getting used to saying we as opposed to I, it's not just me anymore. <laughs> Um, 
we would maintain it um, based off of revenue received from uh, grants, um, from towns, whatever uh, funding fundraising we can do. Um, we have various ideas around that, but yes, the, the maintenance would not fall in the town. Isn't this a tough time? So, sorry, who was that? I, I just wanted to ask, I don't understand why the town has to administer the money if, it, if you guys are your own nonprofit. So, yeah, so the, the, the grant is given to towns. It's through the state. So whenever we install a hitching post, the town actually writes the letter and receives it and then pays the hitching post for money. My question is, isn't this a tough time to have people hitching rides with others when we're all supposed to be socially uh, distancing? <laughs> Excellent question. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a hell of a time to launch a, a ride sharing service uh, <laughs> in, uh, in anywhere in the world right now. Um, it's something that was, there's a lot of, and there still is, it's a lot of support and enthusiasm for whether it's something that people will utilize in the short term is questionable. I, you I mean, know, it's a great it, idea in general, since there's so many people who need rides here and there. Yeah, totally. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think it makes a lot of sense for Vermont. Um, but yeah, so basically how I'm looking at it right now is things are basically on hold. We had some, we had lined up, we had Plainfield, Marshfield, Callis, well, it was the Maple Corner store, uh, never said that Maple Corner store, the um, Adamant Co-op um, Cabot online to be launched actually last weekend. So that's all been put on hold until probably at the soonest the fall. So yeah, we're basically what we're trying to do is get up, catch up on all the things that we didn't have time for until now. So that's why I was like, oh, I should reach out to Middlesex and actually follow up on this and get this hopefully figured so, out. So just, just so I understand Phoenix and, and yeah. You know, I like the, I like, I mean, I, I think your timing couldn't be worse, but uh, right. you're, that isn't your fault. But I just want to get my arms around what's the, so the town writes the letter, the $500 yep. comes in. Yeah. We, we send the $500 to your nonprofit. What right. happens then? Is there, are there closeout agreements that have to be dealt with? What, what's the process? The state's um, only requirement is just to see that the job's been done. Um, they want to see that their money is going towards a project that's been completed. Um, okay. So and, if you somehow don't complete this project, are we responsible? We have to return the money? No. It, well, the thing is... The, well, it's already done, Peter. It's already done. Yeah. The well, project. I, 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 I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just... Yeah. We try and be very careful totally. about... You know, every people come to us and they say, oh, we want to do this. It's great. You know, do this grant, do this, do that. Yeah. And the next thing, you know, Sarah is grumbling and mumbling because she's overwhelmed with paperwork and reports mm -hmm. and things she's supposed to do. And all that is time and money to the town. So if this is a simple one shot thing yeah. and you get the five hundred dollars, that's one thing. But if it's an ongoing process or they're. The grant, I, I just want to understand what, what VTrans is going to require from you. You've done the work. So what do you do? Send them a picture of it? Pretty much. Yep. I, I'm good friends with Dan Courier. We're in touch a lot. And basically, it's just send an email with a picture attached to it. They know all about the hitching posts, and they've been on board since the very beginning um, when it was Ross McDonald in his seat. Um, and so it's 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 surprisingly simple and easy um yeah so you hear that sarah she's gone <laughs> oh i'm here i i hear that uh can i just ask phoenix did you say that the pitching post was already installed when you first yes <laughs> so it's already built it's done okay where yeah. is it it's right outside red hen where are right to say that I actually gave someone a ride from the hitching post in my electric car and he was going to a climate march and it was a man. I just, <laughs> I, I said, you know what? I'm going to take a chance with this young man. And I did it. I was part of it. <laughs> so that was before the uh, pandemic, right? I hope. This was before the pandemic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so is down here an EV charging station? 
What? Where is there it? Is, yeah, there is there a is, charging station at Red Hill. There is one there, yeah. But that's not why I was there. That, that's where it is. The hitching post is right near there. Yeah, it's on the other side. Okay, gotcha. Oh, I feel it's the first you've talked. <laughs> So just to be clear, so the, the word we should be using is reimburse, not in pay for installation, because you've already you've already done the work, right? Correct. Okay. Other questions, anybody? I move that we send a letter to um, Dan Courier from the Govermont VTrans to reimburse Phoenix, uh, to reimburse Hitching Post Vermont or the hitching post that they installed in the middle six. Second. Thank you, Liz. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Was that yep. four or five votes? <laughs> I got Peter's video froze. I don't know if. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, my computer cut out for a minute. Did everybody vote aye? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Maybe we maybe we should do the thumbs up thing. I don't know. I, I, like think it's, I, guess, I guess you're all set. Sarah, okay, you know cool. what you need to do? I'll yes, be in touch with I Sarah, do. I guess, moving forward. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. I, I think, I don't know if you sent me a copy of the letter, uh, Phoenix, but if you, um, if you uh, do, I'll just, I'll just figure it out. I deal with Dan a, a lot too on all sorts of stuff. So Great. it's not a big deal. Okay. I um I'll I'll forward that anyways. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Phoenix. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay, Dorinda, let's see that radiant smile. You're up. You gotta turn your microphone on. Turn your mic on. Nothing to report. <laughs> what? No. I thought we had issues from last time that needed to be resolved. Borrowing money or something? Not until the taxes come in. We don't know where we sit until we'll know something in two weeks. Yep. Right. Um, once those taxes come in, we'll know if we have enough money. So we just just to reiterate we basically we've got a short-term problem and a longer term problem the short-term problem is what are we going to get for for tax money for the last quarter of this year and the longer term problem is when are we going to be able to send out tax bills and when are we going to start getting money for next year so it's a two-pronged uh two-pronged cash flow crunch yeah. but right now there's nothing to do You've got you've got everything set up and ready to go if we need to do it, right? Well, nothing's really set up. I mean, I think now, if anything, the interest rate might even be lower than when I asked her a month ago. So yeah. um, when we're ready to go, they're pretty quick when we ask them. So I don't think it will be long if we have to borrow. Okay. We do have our funds in the other accounts that we can draw on it. You know, before we go you need out. To, right. uh, and in terms of we really I've been trying to follow all the all the governor's stuff, which is a little over his press conferences are getting a little uh little boring for me. But um we still have no idea when we're likely to be able to send out tax bills, correct? Not that I'm aware of. We did receive news on the school, which was very good news. So we got our last information on the payment for that and it's significantly lower than what we were anticipating that we would have to pay good nice. and well you said it was like eight hundred thousand, and we don't have to pay that much what do, what do we have to pay i uh, we're down to like 700 and something it was like a hundred thousand dollar reduction yeah seven hundred twenty thousand. any idea right. why? Hmm. Any idea why it was reduced? No, just the letter I got that said that it was, they sent us what our final amount is, and that's not due till 30 days after we have our last tax due date. So it'll be the 20th of June that we have to pay that. 
you know, the other thing is there may be some money, maybe some stimulus money from the federal government because they're talking as if they want to give money to states and localities. And, yeah, uh, you know, perhaps there's some, it's kind of something where you submit what you need to cover a shortfall. So that's something that we to keep our I eye on. I haven't seen that on municipalities. I certainly have seen it on businesses. Mm -hmm. No, no, it, it, it hasn't passed, but there is talk that the next stimulus bill will include something for states and municipalities. Hey, Dorinda, is the reason that the school um, payment is less due to COVID, like that the schools have shut down, or you have they no idea? Say, they didn't say all they did was set the letter and it basically says this is middle sex portion and i think it was you said 120 i thought it was like 106 or something like that no, I said the, the bill was 120 i mean 720 oh the bill was seven yeah so it was about a hundred and i think a hundred and six thousand dollars lower has that ever happened before that it's a different amount than what you anticipate it's always fluctuates the last payment is always different okay but I don't know, I don't have a lot of history on how much it fluctuated previously, but I thought that was significant. Nice. Yeah. Which hey, is, we'll uh, take it and we can use it, believe me. Yeah. One other thing that I'll just remind you that the board is going to need to address, which is totally out of my hands right now, but I'm kind of going to bring it to your attention is how we will address sending out notices for delinquent taxpayers. Because we have not sent anything in two months. Well, they're not delinquent. Are you talking about delinquent? No, but they, well, we've got late, right now they're late, but, um, you know, as far as our usual cast of characters, but anything that doesn't come in by, the date, you know, like we had talked about how we were going to handle it. Um, you know, basically, we took a stand and not to send anything during this time period, and but we'll have to address it after the 20th of May. May I say something? Yeah. So we should probably bring Dave in one of these conversations because he, he's a separately elected, um, he's a separately elected individual. He is the elected delinquent tax collector. Right. And I don't know that he sets policy, but certainly, you know, he should be, this is his problem and he probably right. needs to address I know, it. And that's, that's what I said. We I should probably that. put that on for the agenda. I, I'd also like to just point out that the listers inform me that they are planning to hold, uh, they're going to, lodge the grand list shortly and they are going to hold grievance hearings at the end of May. So even though the state has given towns an extension for uh, lodging their grand list, those guys, and from what I understand across the state, this is the same thing because actually listers duties have been cut short. They can't go into houses. So um, anyway, that's what's, uh, they're, they're, they're gonna be on time. But, won't it have but that doesn't mean the state will be on time. Right. What's the state got to do? Wait, Don't they have to wait till all of, you know, towns are in? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think they do. Because otherwise have, they do the calculation. Well, like I said, my understanding is that statewide, this is kind of the pattern. Towns know that the listers can't go into houses. There's almost no advantage to delaying uh, doing these grievances. They're going to have they're going to be kind of like some towns are j just using their old grant, like this year's grand list. So they're just, you look at some zoning permits, you drive by, that's it. <laughs> Do you know what date they extended it to? I think they extended it to July. I think for towns it, under, under 50, under five, if you have fewer than 5,000 people, I think you can go to like June 12th or something like that. But they, yeah. I think they extended that by a month. So you're probably looking at at least August. Oh, God. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Peter? Well, excuse me, onward, Peter. Onward and upward. Yeah, George. Yeah. Could I say something from the budget committee now? Because I can't stay for, till the end of the meeting. Sure. Back at town meeting, I thought that it, uh, 
one thing we could do as the budget committee would be to meet with the select board and and talk about long range budget planning, um, including but not limited to the needed renovations on the uh, town hall. So we'd certainly be willing to do that. And then, and then of course, all hell broke loose with the pandemic. So there's a lot right. to talk about. So we'd well, certainly- we are, we are planning to have a, I'm just gonna call it a highway, highway uh, related meeting. And also at some point, once once the pandemic is under control, a a, for lack of a better word, facilities meeting, which would be talking about things like the town garage and the town hall and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. any input or there. our thoughts you guys have would be, uh, would be great. Okay, great. And if you so have any ideas, the whole a couple, meeting. A couple hundred thousand dollars in the short run, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send a check. Yeah, there you go. Well. We're all going to be sending checks in a week or two here. This is Liz, the um, anonymous person who paid all the um, food bills at Romney. It was a very nice thing that person did. That was very nice. Um, you guys, I just have a question. I just want to make one comment about you know, um, you know, this what George was just saying in terms of like you know planning for facilities and these these bigger projects. Um, I really feel like we're not going to be able to be having group meetings for a long time and that, you know, until there's a vaccine, it's probably best that we're not having group meetings. And so we should really consider starting these conversations over Zoom instead of waiting to see when things are going to get better, because I think it's just going to be another year and a half before we're having large groups and people, you know, having big meetings. So it's not a bad idea for us to start sort of thinking about some of those big things and the costs of them and doing some of that research up front so that, you know, I don't know what it would look like, but I, I don't think we're going to be having group meetings even in the fall. Mm -hmm. Hey, Peter, you could, be, you could be right. Uh, Peter, I just want to second what Liz is saying, and and I'm actually very concerned about this highway meeting that is supposedly going to happen at the end of May in town hall. I'm not happy about it. I'm going to just like ride it out, but I have to disinfect everything, and it, I think it's a risk for the town, and I think it's a risk to have them here. But I'm going to let that lie right now. Um, is this the time where I could just quickly very talk about what my plans are for the town clerk's office since we're on this? <laughs> Oh sure. Okay, so let's, just let's, make look, 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 let's let's just finish up with that. I mean, I I think the answer is we should probably plan that that uh, highway meeting is going to be a Zoom meeting, Steve. Um, well, it, that may that may be the case, but let's just wait and see what opens up. I don't I don't think we're going to have a hundred people there. I think it's going to be a lot smaller than that. I'm a lot more optimistic than Liz is on this, but. Uh, anyway, let's just see what happens over the next couple of weeks. And for us to have a Zoom meeting, uh, I'm going to have to have uh, a smaller meeting with all and get some other stuff done prior to my, that. It's my be concern is I don't want to I don't want to make the decision the week before after we've spent money. I mean, it's not it's not Sarah's job to disinfect the town hall, but if we have to have somebody come in and disinfect it. Um, I don't know who we get and how quick we get them. So I'm just I'm just concerned that we can't wait until I can right before. I do, but we can also meet outside anyway. Could we hold it outside? Yeah. Yes, we could probably hold it outside. That's I don't think that's a problem. But I'm I'm saying let's just see what happens over the next couple of weeks. That okay. meeting was tentatively I think on the 23rd or the 24th of this month. Coming right up. <laughs> yeah, I know it's coming right up, but I, both Sarah and I were looking that that probably would have to be down the road further anyway, but and and it probably will. But let's just see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, I hate to I hate to plan on it being an outside meeting because we have no place to shelter if it's pelting rain. So they'll have to have their raincoats. 
Wait a second. You could have it at the uh, Walter <laughs> Kelly Memorial Park with the, the covered picnic table. I don't think you're going to get much, uh, much six foot separation. You're going to have about two people there. Anyway, oh, yeah. that's true. <laughs> We can open up the doors of the old of the old fire station and hold a meeting in there. For the new fire go. station. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Or, but, uh, Liz, I, I agree with your with your comments. I don't want to I don't want to put these things off forever. We heard a lot of uh, a lot of conversation on town meeting day that people want to be involved in this and they want us to uh, set this up. So I don't want to make the pandemic business and an excuse for us sitting on our hands. I want to go ahead, but uh, let's see what, let's figure out what's going on with the road thing first. We've actually had more people come to Zoom meetings than have ever come into our office meetings. So we might actually get a turnout that surprises us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I got to figure out why my computer keeps cutting out. Yeah. I think it's probably that that Mary Hood over there watching MSNBC using up all my bandwidth with her internet TV. Well, the other thing is, you know, I plug mine in, so it's it's powering at the same time. I'm using all this power to have a Zoom meeting, so yeah, you don't end up. That doesn't have anything to do with the internet bandwidth issue, anyway. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, go go ahead, Sarah, quickly. Okay. So um, two things I want just want the select board sign off on. The first is that I need we I talked to Avenue Insights, which is our digital uh, land recording system, and about moving our land records online so that people don't have to come in the office to search land records going to 2004. If they want to go before that, they're going to have to go before that. The way this works is it will be free. It'll take eight weeks for people to do that for for Avenue to set that up. Uh, if someone, you can peruse them for nothing, um, but if you want to print out any land record, like the, if you're a lawyer or somebody else, it's going to be $3 per page for the land record. The town will get $1.50 out of that. The uh, downside for the town, which is not really a downside currently, is that the vault fees, so to speak, the time that people will be in the office, we don't get to charge them, but that is only two dollars a half hour so we'll probably make that up pretty fast and it seems to be i mean i've opened up the office in a limited uh limited uh by appointment only researching so you know people are combining their searches now so if that's okay with you i'm going to go ahead with that is that okay with you i don't how see do why, why we wouldn't do that absolutely that's how do you get the fees? is this what the town clerks have unanimously decided that they charge three dollars a page and we so the land records appear on uslandrecords.com and that's how that's the agreement with avenue with avenue uh whatever they are avenue insights now it used to be acs and then xerox i mean they've been sold five times since i've been town clerk but that's what the deal is so phase two is a little bit bigger in order to allow in order in order to have the office open for the public i'm going to have to redesign the office entirely what i'm going to here is my plan um, and maybe Phil, you can help me out with this. We need to run a cat five line up here to town to the this level of town hall. I'm going to bring all of Marika's what we call Marika's recording station. As you know, Marika's gone. I've been doing the recording. I actually really love it. Um, and we're going to bring all that equipment is owned by Avenue Insights. We're going to bring it all up here. If I can get that cat five, I think we're going to have to call RB. They're going to have to do some sort of wiring because this is special equipment that needs to plug in right with Avenue Insights. Then where Marika's desk is, we're going, I'm going to run a counter, a 23 and a half foot counter across uh, the room. So there will only be one desk there, which is currently my desk. And if we get back into normal, I can get put Dave there on times I'm not there. And I'm going to, Charlie's offered to build the counter. I think he might try to rope in David Kroll and uh, bring down one plexiglass shield so that if we have, when we interact with people, we can interact without having to wear our masks and everything else. And put a half door between the room, that room to the conference room. 
And that will allow researchers to come in and do their research in the conference room and on a limited basis where I can no longer have two or three or four researchers there. It's gotta be one by one by one and only one other person dealing with it. It's gonna be the name of the game for the next 18 months to two years, I think. I think we're really, look that is what we're looking at. I don't know what the expense is gonna be to bring up the cat line. I, I, build, I don't know if you know anything like that, rewiring. But other than that, it's just a matter of turning the equipment off, bringing it up, plugging it back in and turning it on. Where are you bringing it up from? Where Marika's desk is. That's, that is a whole system that ACS set up for, for recording because everything backs up overnight into recording all our digital land right. records. Like, where, is it, where is it now at Marika's desk? That's all that all you see with Marika's desk, the computer, all the stuff underneath there, the special drives, the printer, those are all interconnected. Just it's an ACS system. It has to be hardwired. It has to be hardwired. I talked to him yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay. But we'll have to, yeah, RB uh, either will have somebody come or we'll have to get a recommendation. Uh, it's not hard to do. A lot of people who run a uh, telephone cable uh, can run um, Cat5. And, you know, while they're doing it, we're, probably ought to have two or three different drops so that it can be reconfigured however we need to do it as long as somebody's there doing it so where yeah. where does the where does the cat five line start right now do you know sarah it's off it's to the left of Marika's desk like right where her chair is yeah but where's like, where's the other end of the wire is it at the server i don't know it goes up the it goes up the wall i don't know where it goes after that it goes like it looks like it goes into the floor i, I can't figure out where it goes i'm sure rb knows because they did work with acs when acs had to give her a new system about four and a half years ago i would um, think it would go to the server wouldn't it phil i think it goes over to the server where it interconnects with the modem and then from yep. there to the outside and what do we have comcast yeah yeah i i think that's i think that you're right peter that's where it is well, I don't want to monkey around with it, and I don't want to bring in, you know, I would rather have an IT people. Oh, I agree. Do you know where you want to put the workstation upstairs? Well, partly that depends on that Cat5 thing. I, I would try to minimize the wiring. Well, all I'm, all I'm saying is chances are it's going to minimize, for instance, if it's, if it's at the computer, which is right next to the elevator. Yeah, you cut out again, Peter. Peter's gone. He's gone. He's done. <laughs> I think what he was going to say is we would access the upstairs right there somewhere by the elevator. Well, my only concern is if we ever use town hall again as an educate as a voting place, um, we will. I don't want to block. I don't want my my desk blocking the elevator. You know, so that people. No, I, no, no, no. It can't block. No, it can't block the elevator. But it can be at that end of the building. That's all I'm okay, saying. Okay, so it can be right here where I am right now. It's kind of in this corner right here. Yeah. And there's a well, I can't line right behind. Yeah. All right. But I mean, you once, gotta, they, once they get you it up decide there. where you want the desk to be before we run the Cat yeah. Five line is all I'm saying. Right. Okay. Great. So I would like to do. I mean, I'm, I get. It's very strange. You know, people are insistent on coming into the office to pay their taxes and don't seem to know how they're going to pay their taxes otherwise. And I tell them, look at you could just you know, put it through a slot in the door. And if I'm here, I'll take it and I'll process it and give you a receipt right through there. But I can't have, you know, three people coming into that tiny space standing side by side. That's just not right. It's, this won't work. I don't have, I don't have six foot, I don't have six feet apart to, to work with there. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so well, you're thinking of moving yourself upstairs and having them come downstairs with this long desk or the other way around? I'm confused. So, what, so the deal is that I all Marika's desk does is provide recording. And so if, if uh, let's say we get it all set up, Dave, for example, could be downstairs handling the regular parts of being in the town clerk's office. And I would be use that time to record um, or and also archive up here. Then when Dave's not here, I'd be downstairs and dealing with all the people, but I wouldn't need to record. I wouldn't need the computer. I only need, I only need Marika's system to do the recording and archiving. Okay, got it. 
So the, the only thing I would say is, and it's very nice of, uh, of your one and only to agree to, to agree to build this thing. We at the very least should provide the materials, whatever they are. Yeah. It shouldn't be very much. I'm thinking some beadboard, a half door, and uh, here I might have a lead on a counter. Well, yeah, but it's probably hundreds of dollars. It's not, it's not nothing. Believe me, I know. All, all I'm saying is, I don't think it's a lot of money, but I think we should uh, pay. Dorinda's smiling now. <laughs> Listen, he's, we haven't had it. smiling, Dorinda. You're beautiful when you smile. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. We got to do it. I don't think we need gotta... on that. I, I, would just, I would just say, uh, just say, just say, do it. Unless anybody has any questions or objections. No, do it. We have no choice. I can't see it. Yep. Right. Okay. Thanks. I would say okay. one thing what Phil brought up is that they're going to put that cat five line up there. It's nothing for them to put two or three drops. Right. Yeah. What's a drop? I don't know what a drop is. Drop oh. is the end of the cat five. Where you plug into the the internet, the ethernet cable. You just basically put like a, a, a box with a jack in it. Okay. So while they're doing it, that's what I was saying. You know, put put two or three of them, you know. Okay, great. Well, I, I think the biggest expense isn't going to be the wood and the lab and the free labor, but it's going to be RB Tech. No, I don't yeah, think I don't so. Know RB it's not going to be RB Tech. It's 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 they'll they'll tell you who who does it. But it, I agree with uh, I agree with Phil. It's guys who 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 wire telephone systems, or the guys who do it. So yeah, the wire costs. Wire telephones. <laughs> well, if anybody ha anyway, yeah. whatever. It's we'll not, find it's not a. It's not a technically challenging thing to do, is what I'm saying. But right. you got to buy the wire and you got to drill the holes in the wall and whatever. And then I just need RB to turn it off and set it up again because I don't want to mess anything up. If that's okay. Yep. Right. I agree. Thank I you. agree. Thank you very. Thank you. I think this will be good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now. Now and now, approving April 21 minutes is their motion. So I move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, everybody's favorite subject, considering whether to charge the Middlesex Bandstand Committee the customary $25 for use of the town hall. Don't everybody speak at once. I already said my piece that I didn't think that we should given these COVID times, but that's just me. I don't care. <laughs> It's not that much either way. I agree. I mean, it probably costs five dollars, and we get out of it. Well, we would charge them twenty-five dollars per session. You understand that? Right? If you want to modify that, right? But I mean, how many concerts do they have, and how many are actually likely to be in the town hall? Well, four. They all of them. Well, if it rains They're every one, them are. Oh, no, 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 we're not doing it. No, they're not doing it. They're not going to have any, they're not going to have the bandstand concerts at all because of, of the public gathering danger. They're streaming them. They're going to have them like online or something. Right. Oh, so they're going to stream all of them from the town hall. I didn't understand yeah. that. Yeah. The and why wouldn't they do it at the school? I, I think know. the acoustics, right, Phil? Probably, yeah. The acoustics in town hall are much better than in the gym. Didn't they put an acoustic system in the gym? They what? did, but it was just to like for silencing so that it, you know, wasn't meant for like, for, well, I mean, there was some talk of that, but I don't, I think it's too big of a space to really make a difference for that kind of thing if they want to stream it. My other question is, will it have any impact on what you want to do with moving your equipment up there, Sarah? You know, that's actually, that's actually a really good question. I mean, that's, that wasn't, when we first talked about that, that wasn't a deal. Um, if I put my stuff in a corner, I might be able to block it off. We're not, there aren't gonna be people dancing. They're just gonna be a band, you know? Um, and as long as I don't have like the, you know, a crew with a Pepsi down there, putting it by my computer, I suppose it's okay. Again, I'll have to do the disinfecting. So that's the other issue. I mean, this disinfecting is huge. <laughs> the, it's um, you know, the protocol I've got to follow is I have to dis disinfect at the beginning of my shift, the middle of the shift, the end of the shift. 
So what that really means is as soon as anybody comes into research, I've got to, they've got to disinfect. And then after they leave, I've got to disinfect. So it's like covered with the Lysol 24 seven. Does it make sense that they do their own disinfecting or maybe we charge them and that goes towards the disinfecting costs? Uh, well, they'd have to, they'd have to do their own disinfecting, but I wouldn't just trust that. I would do it as well. It's, yeah. you know, I don't really even know how much the disinfecting, how, how important it is. It's just that that's in the governor's guidelines. Well, certainly is, is somewhat concerning it, it, depending upon how many people they have who are playing. Can they get spread out far enough so that they're actually, you know, practicing good social distancing? Another question. If they're not, I think that really complicates that issue. I think you're right. they well, never, they never seven, right? Well, I mean, the concerts I've been to, they've never been that many people in the in the band. No, usually what three, four, maybe. Yeah. Right. Plus, you have the issue of Sarah having to secure everything she's got there. Right. So it's not secure by letting somebody in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe we tell them no then. Uh. Well, I'm sorry about that. I mean, I, I, I'd hate to have that screwed up, but that's if I'm going to move up there by June, then that will be right in their schedule. So yeah. I, I, personally think that for right now we should not let them in there yeah okay. yeah the more i think about it i agree what steve's saying i think that it just it's not a good idea we're repurposing the space to uh try and make the most effective use of town hall and we're most likely not going to be able to accommodate so yeah better off finding another spot yeah you're probably right yeah yeah, I agree. With, I agree with I that. Agree. I'm, I'm, I mean, if we're, if if this is going to be a, uh, a a long term thing, and who knows at this point, um, we should probably figure out some way to create a, for lack of a better word, a little office space up there that can be closed off, because I don't like the idea of having random people in there. And uh, what are you going to do about the other people who use the use the town hall, Sarah? I really think it's going to be closed until COVID's over. Again, we have a we have a meeting issue. You have a gathering issue. Period. Um, and I think that it's just got to have to. I don't, unless we get a miraculous vaccine or the virus just goes away, I don't see I don't see any solution. No. What about letting use the yeah. old firehouse? That firehouse is gross. Yeah. Well, that's you know that doesn't bother people in bands. <laughs> oh, they and always be in garages. <laughs> the other well. thing to consider, Sarah, down the road is possibly you could have people coming in upstairs to pay their taxes and things like that because there would be more room to social distance them. Yeah, that might be if we had a trustworthy elevator. Mm. Well, I mean, you'd have to, like, if somebody needed, I mean, they could still come up the front steps in the good weather. Yeah, I think, I think you know, and again, Marika's computer, and that's when I'm thinking about where I put the computer, that's something to consider. If we open up Town Hall that way, I should probably pick a space where, you know, that's accessible. Maybe you and I can come, you can help me figure out where to put that because you're good at that. Um, that would, I would really appreciate that. So that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think it might serve a lot of purposes because there's a lot more room for people to move around up there if you yep. have to get that six feet. We just, and Weight Watchers doesn't meet here anymore, so we yep. haven't had the same use of this. And again, we're- hasn't exactly, hasn't exactly been a source of revenue. Yeah. Okay. And not that many 14-year-old kids' birthday parties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those have to be put on hold. <laughs> well, let's let's deal with it. Let's deal with the situation at hand, and uh, and then think about the future. But I don't I don't disagree. Maybe this is the maybe this is the time where now you have to have when you're giving people access to the vault, somebody has to be downstairs, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's think about it. But I think your solution for the time being is a good solution. We just 
our policy is we don't we no longer rent out the town hall the upstairs okay thanks well isn't that a decision she makes as this as the town clerk <laughs> we try to work <laughs> we try to work cooperatively here right i just say it <laughs> the, the select board recommends you consider <laughs> i don't want anybody to see my nails anyways it's too embarrassing <laughs> well then don't <laughs> fix your hair <laughs> right. okay uh correspondence so you you will let them you will let them know um we all got the uh we all got the orders i looked them over quickly but i'll look them over some more and 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 respond and I everybody saying all right. Yeah. What how, can I be, how can I be late? <laughs> you're, in okay. you're not you late. Are, you're just last. You guys are tough. Well, I'm probably late and last. Yeah. Um, do we have any correspondence? Just the stuff I sent you. Okay. Yep. Um, so we all got, I mean, just getting back, getting back to the road thing, we got that letter. Obviously, we're not going to block that road off or not not allow vehicles through there that's completely contrary to what we're trying to do and uh certainly no matter what we come up with we're not going to be making that an interstate highway or upgrading it to class three standards or any of that um well so the, I, don't we, we have should, doesn't, doesn't the town uh road commissioner or foreman have the ability to close roads when it's mud season. I thought that Paul sure we do. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. do. Yes, yeah. we do. So, I mean, we could just, I mean, I think it makes sense not to have people using that back there. For, I, I, agree. You know, I agree, Mary, and I think that's something that we will do and more than one spot. Yeah. yeah. Good idea. Okay. Good. But, yeah. I agree with everything else you guys said. Any correspondence? No. Uh, any other business? I just have something to say. Um, okay. So um, I mentioned it in an email to Sarah, and I just wanted to give a quick update. Was that um, the Red Hen partners or, or the Camp Mead partners want to um, conduct a large-scale um, food distribution day? Um, you know, with donated food um, at the, you know, people wouldn't get out of their cars, but it would be sort of a drive-by thing similar to what the the National Guard did with the MREs, except that it would be um, food that would be made by possibly local restaurants, maybe even um, community members, um, so it would be meals that uh, people would be coming to pick up. It was something that they wanted to do in two weeks, um, but it turns out they're pushing it back to June. And I had quickly, you know, emailed Russ last night saying, you know, does anyone from the town know this yet? It's probably something you want to at least let us know about. I'm not sure that any permits would be needed because, it, well, they're working with the state because it's on a state highway. Yeah. Um, but whether or not we as a town um, would need to, um, aside from just have a heads up, is there anything that we would need to do um, or, uh, you know, permit? Can I, can I just say, why don't they just use, instead of being on a state highway, why don't they come through the back here where it's safe and they can do a, do a drop off right here behind town hall and then pull out? Can't, wouldn't that be better? Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's actually at Camp Mead. I think it's something like that's going to be literally, and I think that they're working with the state in terms of um, traffic flow because I think it's going to, they're anticipating traffic is going to be coming from both directions on Route 2. Um, and so um, it's, they're going to work those logistics out so that, you know, cars aren't having to like turn around or, you know, be doing bizarre things. Um, Wouldn't they go by the old little cabins and come out the other side? I mean, I, yeah, that's... I don't know. All I know is this, is that they wanted to do it. They wanted to do it in two weeks. And I was like, I don't know how you're going to pull that off with getting donated food, but they have since pushed it back to June. 
and Russ may or may not, you know, want to get on the agenda just to explain it to us, but it's not where people are getting out of cars. It's not where people are going to have to park, um, but there will be, you know, traffic control. There will be volunteers holding, you know, with masks, giving food out. Um, there may be a call for volunteers in the town to actually create and package meals. Um, I know Capstone's Community Kitchen will be um, involved in making, um, you know, some percentage of the Okay. He's frozen. Anyway, yeah. I need to go. I, Those you know, I only have one concern on that is that that the town be informed of what their plan is. Right. Right. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And there, I don't think they had an intention or they just hadn't thought of that piece. But yes, I agree. That, well, that's I mean, why I'm saying it now. Well, them to be trying to do this. I think it's a terrific idea. Yeah. But you yeah. know, you're right, Liz. It, we, we don't want to be driving down there and find it's something we didn't know about. Right. 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 So... Anyway, it's now being pushed back. I suggested that he, you know, get himself on the agenda once it's kind of finalized so that he, so that we know sort of what to expect. Uh, and when? Um, advertisements will be going out. There's three days you know, in June. I want to know when. <laughs> okay, guys. One at, Good. One at a time. Know. Bye. Hey, Phil. Are we all done? I believe we are done. Good night, everyone. Have a good Good night. Yeah. Peter, before you sign out, yeah. Peter, I have a piece of paper that has to be signed for Welsh Park. I'll drop it off at the town hall. Okay, yep. And I take it you...